Hey there, War Gamers, Justin our Painter, and today we're going to play with some speed paints. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. If you are new here, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. Let's take all the energy you'd focus into those weapons and let's turn it on helping the channel grow. If you're a returning viewer, thank you for tuning in as well. Thanks for being an awesome, awesome Sibkin, part of the Sibco, maybe you're even a Lance mate. I appreciate the support and I appreciate you guys coming back. So what are we gonna work with today? Today I'm going to try my hand at doing a little bit of speed paint work on a mech that I picked up from Adepticon uh, from Christian from the CGL booth. Uh, it's not going to be painted as the Wolves in Exile like he wanted, because I'm not sure exactly how to approach the paint scheme, and I need to get this done quickly so I can uh, continue getting the grinder box built for uh, Nova 2023. Uh, so I grabbed some speed paints from the Army Painter line, and I'm hoping to tackle um, something akin to a uh, Beta Galaxy Clan Wolf scheme quickly, um, and we'll see. If this is a dumpster fire, we'll be going at it together, and if it turns out well, pretty cool. Uh, so we're working with the Turkina, which is the model that uh, Christian had said that was one of his favorite clan mechs, and that's what we're going to work with today. So I've gone ahead and prepped this with Zenithal highlighting, and when you do this with the, the gray and the white, you end up with this nice fade, but because you're spraying the white, you can put it on real thin, and then you can dry brush white to get makeshift highlights on here, and it's slightly brighter than here, so you look like you get white highlights, and when you uh, come over with thin or transparent paint, generally you get a nice highlight through. I'm not sure how this is going to go today, but we are going to try. Uh, so for the paints, uh, we've got our medium, obviously, we've got dark wood, We've got uh, Grave Lord Gray, and we've got Palette Bone. So this is our wood color, and I'm hoping that we can use that a little bit for the shadows. Uh, we've got our bone color. I'm hoping that could be our beige upper level. We'll see, and this is our gray, and I'm thinking that might be good for the legs to get us something in the Beta Galaxy kind of scheme. Um, not sure. We'll have to see how it goes. That said, I think we're going to start off with the dark colors here first. Um, we're going to be using an airbrush because I think that's going to be fun. Uh, we'll hit this uh, with the airbrush and then we'll try and mask it off and then try and spray the top and see what we can do uh, quickly when it's in this pre-prepped uh, state. So we've got our Gray Lord Gray loaded up in our airbrush here. And we're going to spray a little bit on these areas that don't matter just to see what the coverage looks like first and kind of get a feel for what we're going to look like here. So that is going to darken up a little bit, but we'll see. This may take multiple passes uh, to get the color they want, but let's see what we can do. As we do this, we're going to be applying thin coats, and we're going to be trying to not hit the top of the torso as best as we can. It's not the end of the world if we do, because again, we're trying to go for speed here, but we'll see what we can achieve. Also, it's uh, worth noting that I prepped this guy very quickly. I did not clean any of the mold lines because I'm lazy. And unless it's going to be a crazy display piece, um, I often don't do the uh, the mold lines. Um, I think once it's done, you probably won't notice them too bad. There are some here, but it is what it is. Um, I kind of think if you're going with speed paints and you're watching this, you're probably not as worried about competition pieces and probably more worried about trying to get stuff done on the tabletop quick with a good uh, quality. Um, but if you are trying to go for a step above, you can use some of the techniques that I might show you and then um, you know, take the, the game a step further by cleaning the mold lines and prepping the mini a little bit better. That is always a viable option. So this is definitely going on very, very thin. Looks like our airbrush is almost empty, so we'll get a little, uh, get a little refill here and come back in and we'll give it another pass in these areas to darken it up. Trying to give it a little bit more gusto this time. I feel like I was being a little bit um, um, not generous enough, so to speak, on the, the first pass. So this time we're gonna go for a bit better coverage. I think it being a little darker is definitely okay. So with that applied, I'm liking where that is at so far. It's a little bit on the brown gray kind of vibe. This right here looks very gray. It's supposed to be the same one. So it's got a little tint of what looks like brown, um, and especially like right in here. Um, but I think this is going to be fine. Um, once we're finished with this, it's going to look a little different because we'll dry brush over with some bright gray. So I think that'll uh, make it pop and help break that up a little bit. But I don't hate it. I think we're um, on, uh, on track for where we want to be. 
Now I am going to say that I am using the Army Painter Speed Paints, and these are the Mark I versions. I don't know if they put an annotation so you know if they're different, but I'm using the Mark I's, so they tend to bleed uh, if they or reactivate it once they get wet. So to help prevent some of this, I'm going to seal this layer with some matte varnish, or in this case, mecha varnish from Vallejo. Um, I like that pretty good for um, a, a preliminary um, matte varnish step, and it helps uh, seal up the minis, and especially for minis you're going to play with, this is a great application of a varnish to help protect them, because it's designed for gunpla, or gundams, plastic gundams, which get a lot of heavy um, handling and manipulation with uh, you know fingers, look oily, oily grubby fingers from us humies, or spheroids, as you Battletech fans would say. I think. Um, so if it's good enough to seal up uh, gunpla minis uh, or models so that people can repose them and play with them and so forth, I've, uh, I've found that I think it works pretty good for sealing up minis as well since we're going to be playing with these and it'll help protect them and prevent chipping or wearing. Now that said, this is just a protective coat. It's not a 100% preventative measure, but it is going to be helpful and get us uh, at least a little bit of protection from the elements, from their human fingers, and so forth. That said, we're going to go let, go ahead and let this matte varnish dry, and then uh, we'll get on to the next step where we, where, where we will be masking off these legs so that we can spray the top. With our matte varnish now dry, we're going to get into the next step, and that is going to utilize some Silly Putty. Now, it's been a while since I've done this, but I used to do it on stream quite often, and this is great for masking absorbs paint pretty well. It's malleable, and generally it protects... Or it. Um, it doesn't damage the minis too much. Sometimes it will peel paint off. Um, hopefully I waited long enough on this matte varnish that it won't uh, damage anything. We do a little dab and, and hope. It doesn't look like it peeled anything off. Um, there are other things you can do, but I find this to be um, one of the best low risk um, options. And it, because it's malleable, you can get in here and you can really um, force it down into the areas that you want. Um, so if you have like a sculpting tool or, tool or something, you can really um, work it into those hard to reach places. And with this model, um, the torso is really hard to uh, single out with an airbrush without some form of masking. So I'm trying to thin this out and use a silly plate to get as close as possible. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't perfect. So sometimes you'll have to come in by hand and fix areas that you couldn't quite get with the masking. Like this upper leg is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but we're going to do the best we can to try and mask that off. I'm using the back of my X-Acto blade here to help prevent as best as possible any damage to the undercoat here. I uh, would appreciating. Um, if we did damage a little bit, it's not the end of the world because it's on the underside of the mini, so not the end of the world. Peel off a little bit of that. You know, notice I'm focusing on the underside of the torso first because um, that's the important areas. You can easily cover up the bottoms of the legs uh, there at the end. doesn't matter much. Um, they're not super hard to target, but the underside here is definitely difficult. So lay that down. Okay. And this, again, if you've got a sculpting tool or something, you can get in here and get really persnickety with how close you get your silly putty. But... If you're in a pinch, which I am because I'm not sure where my sculpting tools are right now, which means they're not within arm's reach, so the X-Acto blade will have to do. And one of the benefits here is if there's any bleeding uh, or we mask off improperly or not good uh, and any gets on the coat underneath, we can go over it with a little bit of um, um, speed paint or black because that undercoat or the legs are going to be dark color anyway, uh, which is why we started with the legs first instead of the torso because the legs are dark. So if there is any um, fixes whoops, that we <laughs> have to make... Um, it won't be too bad to cover those. All right, so we've got our Silly Putty here covering the mini, and if I'm working on a large batch of minis, I will have uh, quite a few little eggs of this uh, to go around if I'm doing a bunch of minis, but if it's just one, one egg's enough. This is probably good for a couple of mechs, uh, depending on the size. This one's a pretty large example. Some of the other mechs are a lot easier to mask off, like this guy would probably be easier to mask off the bottom half. Now, there's other methods you can use, too, that I have used. Um, you can use um, uh, tinfoil, which uh, I've used quite a bit. You can use saran wrap, um, and you can use cling wrap. I find cling wrap to work um, pretty good uh, if you've got it available. Um, I have access to it, um, or it might be stretch wrap. We've got some packing uh, wrap stuff that I use at work frequently um, that you can really pull and wrap around itself and it, it kind of self adheres but it doesn't really damage anything i find that really really good for um, working on stuff like this because i can like force it really almost like just like razor thin up on the torso and then pull taut and wrap around itself and it really gets a nice adhesion but uh, it's not something that everyone's got access to so uh, that said, we're going to come in here and now we're going to start working on uh, the upper torso. We're going to try our hand at doing a little bit of pre-shading. 
I want to see how this um, dark wood is going to look. And let's go ahead and clear airbrush out here. And uh, we'll spray a little bit on the handle here where it's white and we'll see how that's going to come out. Um, I don't hate that. We're going to go very, actually, you know what? I was going to say we're going to go very carefully, but I feel like if we get multiple coats in one area, this might really easily become overpowering. So we're going to thin that a little bit. And one of the nice things about this paint, or the speed paint, is already super duper thin. So it runs through the airbrush generally without having any, issue, having any issues. You don't have to worry too much about uh, preparing it like you would a normal acrylic paint that um, is not pre-thin. So this stuff works pretty good for that. So spray a little bit on the back of our hand. Test on our mini here. And now we're going to come in here and we're going to hit the darker sides and try and leave some of that white area showing through. And as I've mentioned in videos before, if you've been following me for any length of time, I'll talk about um, it's easier to change the miniature's angle for to get you a better angle of attack on the mini than it is to change the direction of your airbrush uh, relative to the mini. So you can adjust him a lot. So think smart, paint, uh, paint smarter, not harder, so to speak and you'll be able to get some nice fades and stuff going on pretty quick. Um, I don't do a lot with speed paint. I do a lot by hand, so I'm hoping that this will, this journey together will give me some ideas for speed painting, especially for the channel to get more minis uh, prepped more quickly for uh, YouTube battle reports and stuff, and also give you guys some ideas on how to speed paint your minis and get a um, good, decent quality quickly. Uh, especially if you've got an airbrush, um, it'll open up some other opportunities for you that um, speed paints uh, can't do as easy by hand. Uh, so like when we're trying to do like a kind of a two-tone thing like this or multiple paints to get a fade, um, that's a little harder to do by hand. And I'm essentially doing some like added pre-shading here, going around the shadows and prepping that because I know I'm gonna be going over it with that bone color afterwards. And I think, let's hit the side a little bit here. I think that is about where I want to stop with the wood because I want to come in with this pallid bone and that is this color here which I think when we thin it down it's going to give us a nice beigey kind of color that'll look good for Clan Wolf Beta Galaxy. So we've got our pallid flesh here prepped. I've thinned it down a little bit with the speed paint medium um, and or I should say maybe diluted not necessarily thinned. Um, this is going to dilute it. Uh, thinning makes it like thinner. This is just more of a medium um, so it, it, it helps um, adjust the amount of pigment in, in there uh, and basically I'm wanting it to be more subtle so I can add more paint. It's a thing I do a lot. It slows down my painting but I have a philosophy of you can always add more paint. You can't go back and add less so if I have to do multiple layers or multiple thin coats as Duncan would say I'd rather do that than to do one coat up front and then mess it up. So uh, let's come in here. Uh, we'll start with the guns here and see how that looks because this is an area we're going to cover later anyway. Um, so that's one of the things I do. You saw me spray in the handle. Um, and when it comes to a mini, you can spray a spot first that is going to be covered later uh, just to see. And that's nice bright white so we can spray the barrel of the gun and see if we like that color. And I actually think that is... That is really reasonable. All right, folks, we're going full bore, full tilt, all guns ready to go. Alpha strike in this Turquina with this uh, pallid bone color. Um, I'm going to do thin passes, and we are going to cover up that brown that we lay down as well so we can get a nice, smooth transition. Yeah, look at that, folks. That He's just one little little uh, airbrush stroke at a time or pass at a time. It's coming to life. It's starting to really look like Beta Galaxy because it's got that beige upper upper torso on our Beta Galaxy minis or, or Clan Wolf stuff. And that is, man, that was fast. That was fast. And the beauty of this is we're using the speed paint and we've pre-shaded and uh, used minimal effort to do this by hand, would have taken a bit. Even to do it with traditional airbrush uh, methods I would use with acrylic paint, it would have taken me quite a bit to get a fade like this, and this was pretty speedy. So I'm kind of rotating the mini as well, trying to make sure I'm not missing anywhere, because once we pull the masking off, I don't want to have to go back in and spray anything. So just going for coverage here, make sure we hit everything. And there we go. I think that that looks great. So we're going to let that dry and then we'll peel off the masking here and see what we've got. So with our mini dry, uh, we are going to seal up our paint here so we don't drop or mix any on our, our mini here. 
and we will go ahead and peel this off. Now, one of the things I have been doing that um, you guys haven't seen on camera because I've been cutting is I have been using a hairdryer to speed up some of the dry process because it will make filming faster. That's also a trick you can do if you're trying to paint quick. There are a few areas that were a little bit thin on the um, application, namely like, namely like under here and so forth and right there. Not too bad, not as easy to get to, especially when I'm on camera trying to angle this and I'm looking at the screen and not necessarily at the model the whole time. That's not the end of the world though. If you do that, you can always come in by hand and put a little bit and try and clean that up. That said, we're gonna go ahead and take a fresh piece of, or not fresh, but a piece of our uh, silly putty that wasn't being used. We're gonna place it down and that's gonna help us get a grip to start peeling this off. And there we go. We'll start getting the slime off of our little bro. And there we go. And see that comes off beautifully. And if any sticks, you just start dabbing until you get it. Not not dabbing like that. You know, we're not we're not dabbing. Um, or are we? So there we go, and you just kind of press. You can see, it comes right off the base. Whoops, he almost came off the base. All right, and if you find any persnickety spots that looks like we got a little spot right, right down, down in here, uh, just press down, force it into the grooves, and it'll pull your silly putty right off. And there we go. I think for real speedy-like, that's got us uh, in the rough ballpark of where we want to be for our beta galaxy. Uh, we're going to come in here um, with a dry brush step and see if that uh, brings us across the finish line for getting a, a quick paint scheme down for beta galaxy clan wolf. For our next step, we're going to be working on some dry brushing, and I've got a few paints here for that. For the upper portion here, we're going to be using Ivory from Vallejo, and for the lower portion, we're going to use a little bit of Pro Acrylic Neutral Gray and Bright Neutral Gray. Now, we could use a Pro Acrylic for the top, but I've been using the Ivory because it's what I'd used on my Beta Galaxy, so that's what we're going to work with today. Uh, so that said, we're going to start off with some Neutral Gray here, give it a little shake, Put some on our palette or whatever we are using and we'll get going. So one of the things that I'm a big fan of is these Army Painter dry brushes. I think they are some of the best and I got these from Monument Hobbies. Oh, sorry, not Monument Hobbies. Uh, Fortress Miniatures and Games. I get my Pro Acrylic from Monument Hobbies. Uh, he was gracious enough to send these over. I've been using them before he did but I wanted a set that was fresh for the channel so we picked these up. With a brush loaded up with the neutral gray, we're going to come in here and we're going to start dry brushing these legs. I'm going in a downward angle here because we want to preserve some of the dark undersides. And I'll also go side to side as well. We're just trying to not go down to up. We're going to go um, up to down and side to side. It sounds a little goofy, but that's what we're going to do. And you'll notice this is really starting to pick up some of those edges and it's subtle, but I like to do this because I can come in with the bright neutral gray and hit some hot spots and uh, really make it pop. I think that with this particular style of dry brush, you get a nice subtle effect without going overboard and it blends quite nicely. Okay, now I've got my glove on, so it's hard for me to gauge the, the paint level that was coming off. Um, that is a habit that is a good one to have. You can always test on the back of your hand. These paints aren't going to hurt you. Just wash your wash your hand or your thumb off afterwards. So it's kind of a uh, kind of therapeutic, a little a little relaxing. Hopefully, it's relaxing to tune in. Hopefully, you're learning something or at least having this in the background while you're getting your hobby on. Um, but as we can see here on these legs, this gray is very, very subtle, but it's given us a little bit of an edge, which is what we're going for. Because we're trying to go for speed here. We're not trying to manually edge highlight. I'm going to get these done when I'm on the table looking pretty good without having to spend forever. And I think for the limited time we've spent, this guy's already coming to life. That said, now let's go ahead and transition over. And that was, that was it. We didn't need much. But now we're going to transition over to our bright neutral gray. And we're going to go in for a little bit of a brighter highlight on top. We're going to use the same brush to uh, work the paint into our bristles because uh, we already had a gray in there. It's fine. We're getting a brighter gray this time and it'll kind of mix with the neutral gray as well. So not a big deal because it's going on the same mini. Okay, let me get this glove off. I don't quite need it anymore. Um, I'm not getting a good accurate gauge of the, the paint flow on the brush. And you can see there's quite a bit in there, more than I thought, so let's work more of it into and off of the bristles. Okay, feeling a little bit better about that. So same thing, going to go to down to, um, or up to down, top to bottom um, strokes. And that is still got a lot in there. 
Okay, work some more of that out. Beautiful. Now, nothing's really going to replace your traditional edge highlights, but if you're going for speed, uh, you can get some nice coverage and a decent look on your minis pretty quick with this. And honestly, I use this on my minis as well, and then I just manually edge highlight over um, to get a, a more crisp edge in the spots that I want. But this is not terrible. So here we go. One of the things you want to avoid while you're dry brushing is getting your dry brush wet because then you end up kind of painting and not dry brushing. The point of this is you have a limited amount of pigment or paint mashed into the bristles and it's catching the edges as you go down and leaving a little bit on the mini versus actually like painting, painting. Um, and if it gets wet, you'll be back to painting, painting, which is why I was testing on my hand first because you'll be doing more of this rather than dry brushing, which is not what we want. So there are our legs for our beta galaxy fella. That said, now we can transition over to our ivory paint and we'll hit the top. Now I've got a couple of dry brushes here for this uh, so I could get targeted stuff if I'm struggling, but let's go ahead and get this going. Um, I, think this, uh, I think this one will do us just fine. I'm gonna get our paint into our bristles here. I know I'm hyper zoomed in. I've got my palette over here, but I figure you guys don't really need to see uh, me just putting paint on the, the brush. I'm also working it into a paper towel right here until not a lot is coming off. This was the second pass. You can see a lot less coming off. And then as the last step, I will test on the back of my hand just to get a feel for kind of how much is remaining. So with this one, uh, we're going to be going in a, a front to back kind of motion here because that is and side to side because that is where we want our edge highlights to be. And I will kind of press down a little bit as I do this as well, because I feel like we're gonna leave a little bit more paint here. And what we want is this to lighten him up significantly while leaving these edges, because I feel like the Beta Galaxy isn't quite this tan. It's a little bit more on the beige side. And I do this through the dry brush step because we get nice edge highlights and a decent fade without having to work. And you can see like up here, that tonal shift, it's immediately apparent that it's different. Uh, it looks more on the beige side. And I really like that. And I typically get this um, when I use my traditional acrylic paints, um, uh, when I'm painting my, uh, my Clan Wolf Little Bros. And I think I'm using, um, oh man, I can't remember the ivory colors from Pro Acrylic right offhand. I use those and I do the same kind of thing, uh, except it includes like washes and things like that to get to this state. Um, but in this case, the speed paints got me pretty far along. Uh, I might be able to work them into my Beta Galaxy uh, rotation as well just to get me going. I'll just have to remember to seal them up in between steps so that they aren't bleeding or reactivating. And with this one I'm kind of giving it a like kind of clockwise swirl motion because uh, I'm really trying to leave some on the uh, canopy there. Um, I want to lighten it up like we did on the top of the torso or I guess the the center of his shoulders as it is. There we go, that's lightened up pretty nice. And you can see it's very subtle, and you can you can always go back and add more. You can't go back and add less, so with that dry brushing, I do the same thing. I'll rework, or I'll keep working a spot till I'm happy, and uh, if, I, if you get the paint off properly, you're leaving little amounts every time, and you can slowly work this up. And I really, I really enjoy this. I think it's, um, underrated and honestly like that looks pretty good for the time we've invested i have been doing cuts but honestly um of the painting stuff i do this is way faster and the cuts aren't cutting out that much it's mostly just cutting out me using a hair dryer uh, so not the end of the world now this ivory is pretty thin um so i've used what's on the palette so i had to restock that we're going to come back in with a little bit more and really making sure we work that paint out of the bristles because we don't want to uh, mess up our work here so uh, I like to do this on the dark areas as well. It uh, just makes things pop. Um, granted, the, this is obviously where the shadows would be, and now we've edge highlighted over them, um, so it's not as um, accurate probably to the light source, but I think on the tabletop it reads better that way, so that's why I do it. Uh, if you want to skip this area because you want to keep it dark, you can do that uh, with your minis. 
but a lot of what I do is focused on trying to uh, make something look pretty good and then also look really good on the table uh, from a distance. Uh, and I don't specialize in trying to do like straight tabletop. I feel like I do more than tabletop on my own stuff. Um, but uh, for my commission days, this is stuff that's bled through. You want something to look good um, from across the table too. So doing this highlights in other areas works. If I'm doing a competition piece, I'm a bit more cognizant of where I want my light sources to be or where the highlights would be. Uh, but for tabletop wargaming, it's not as big of a deal. It's not as big of a deal. This also makes it much simpler to do so you're not having to stress. And honestly, the painting should not be stressful. This should be fun and enjoyable for you. And on that note, folks, I think we have rapidly and unexpectedly hit a point where I don't think we need to do any more for the dry brushing. Um, if we did anything, we could work the legs up a little bit more, but I think we get a nice transition there. We've got the edge highlights, and the next steps that I would do if this was uh, a mini I was going to complete, and maybe we will, maybe there'll be some other segments, wink, wink. Um, the next steps would be to obviously seal this up. Um, we can come in and do manual highlights if we want on these legs. I often will do that. I'll come in with a little bit of a manual highlight. Um, just to get it a little brighter in spots I specifically want. This one's not too bad because it's very bright. This is very subtle. So, so you know, you, you pick and choose when you go. Um, so I might do some manual highlights. Uh, I might do some washes or oil washes. I might do some decals um, and then fill in the like barrels and stuff so that those have details as well. But on that note, folks, I think that is where we are going to stop today. I think that this is a good baseline for where you can get your Beta Galaxy minis uh, very quickly, and then the detail portions are left to you. Uh, stay tuned. There will be some other videos uh, coming up where I show other techniques to uh, enhance this guy and kind of bring him to the next level or <laughs> finish him uh, to completion because obviously he doesn't have these decals on there or anything else. Uh, but for now, again, that is where we're going to stop today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. Sound off in the comments below if you've been working on minis of your own. And as as always, keep painting your models, keep rolling your dice, and I will catch you next time. If you guys are still sitting here watching this, let's take a moment to uh, put a pop up here to showcase those wonderful Patreon supporters here. We'll let that scroll here, and uh, thank you so much for supporting what I do. That's super awesome. I really do appreciate that.